Unbelievably, it's been eight years since the launch of the first Ducati Scrambler. We're here in Valencia testing the 2023 model. I'm Steve Lamb, he's Chad, and you're watching Bike Social. So on the face of it, the 2023 model might look like the rest of the range. The 2019, the 2016 models all have this great, funky, chunky tired, retro off-road look. But actually underneath the skin of this bike, 70% of the components have changed. But what exactly has changed under the skin? Well, if we just start at the top and work our way down, I guess the biggest change is that for 2023, we get ride by wire throttle. Now, on the face of it, that might not seem that important, but of course it gives us two rider modes, road and sport. Yep. It gives us four traction control. Jump off. Jump, jump in if, if I make mistakes. Yeah. Four plus off traction control settings. Yeah. Two and three are auto selected by the rider modes. One yep. and four then are selectable as well as off. Okay. And once you switch them off, it's saved. So if you switch off traction in one of the modes, okay. and you switch it off and you switch it back on again, still off. Oh, I didn't try that, so that's that's great news. Everything is selectable on the on the, on move, the fly. On the fly. Yep. Um, close the throttle, select your modes, close the throttle, open it again, that mode's engaged. And that's obviously far easier because we've got the new clocks. Yep. So yep. big T four and yeah. a half. TFT, we'll come back to that a little okay. bit later because I've I've covered that in the styling. Um, the two road, two modes, road and sport. Power is the same on both, torque is the same on both, but it really it's just the profile of that throttle engagement. Yep. Um, certainly on my 2016, the, the throttle was quite snatchy from low revs. Mm -hmm. I swapped it for a Rizoma grip. Oh, really? Um, cool. which, which calmed it down a little bit. Um, and full disclosure, 2016, I bought one of the first edition uh, classic scramblers, the beautiful Sunset Orange Classic. I put my hand in my pocket, I paid for that out of my own money. And this was before you were famous this in Bike This was before World I was rich and famous as part of Bike this Social. Was this was hand in pocket, this you was purchased it from a proper, Ducati dealership. Proper Ducati punter, I went down the dealership, put cold hard cash. I, Which I, you still have now. I still have it. And actually I, I traded in my FZ6 phaser, mainly because peak torque on the phaser was something like 10,000 RPM, peak power 14,000, if you remember it had the yeah, R6 yeah, yeah. engine in yeah, yeah. it. And for the riding that I did, I just didn't see that power and torque. So lower down commuting, I was going to Cambridge every day, it was a real pig to ride and it just didn't suit my riding yeah, style. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think I'm overstating it, but when I bought the Scrambler, that, that changed my biking outlook. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of got a bit bored with riding, but the Scrambler really just opened up a whole new yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be massively biased during this video. <laughs> you know, full disclosure, that's why I brought you on board, because I need an objective um, journalistic view rather than my rose tinted specs of oh it's a scrambler I well, love I, it. I rode the first scrambler in Palm Springs in California yeah yeah so I think I was one of the first Europeans to ride it uh -huh. so after I rode it and praised highly about the bike um, you probably read my report and bought it so it's my fault that you yeah, probably bought maybe, the scrambler. maybe maybe still owe me so anyway back back to the 23 model um, I could speak for ages about my model but back to the 23 it's lighter four kilograms lighter yep. um, some of that is from the battery. It's got a smaller, yeah, about 1 .7 smaller from battery, the battery in. The rear subframe is different. Um, it's now so bolted a, on. Bolted on, so there's a little bit of weight saving there. Some of the engine covers are a little bit different. Yeah, clutch is lighter. Clutch is lighter. Um, now, I think the hydraulic clutch was introduced on the 2016 model. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, the 2019 model. My 2016 has got a, quite a stiff clutch. Yeah, this is one thing. Made, made worse that I put little shorty levers on because I'm a bit of a poser. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, riding this today has just been fantastic in yeah. terms of clutch control. Really light, one or two fingers. Yeah. Um, really, really smooth action. I think they've changed some of the bearings in the gearbox to make that gear engagement just that little bit smoother. Yep. And to be honest, hard acceleration, clutchless changes up and yeah, down. Yeah, you can do it clutchless so changes. Easy. Up. Yeah, yeah. The engine, pretty much the same. 803cc, Desmond Due, 73 horsepower at 8,250 Good. RPM. Um, unchanged from the previous That's models. exactly the same as the previous, but your first generation was a little bit more. It, yeah, it was 75, I 75, think. Yeah, yeah so yeah. It, was only, it was only two horsepower. Um, Euro 5 compatible now, though, yep. which, is, which is a big, big deal, really, you know, to keep the same power, but to get that Euro 5 compatibility, really good move. Torque, completely different matter. One lug foot down on torque. Yeah. But it comes in, my 2016 model, peak torque is at 5,750. This comes in at 7,000 RPM. Yeah. And that, that kind of put me off 
I thought it was going to put me off originally because part of the reason I love my scrambler is is the low down grunt out of corners. Mm -hmm. You really feel that thrust as you're coming out of corners. And I was I was afraid that this was not going to feel the same. Yeah, you were afraid that the torque had dropped at the front and gone to the yeah, back. Yeah, but actually, yeah, yeah. you know, we we spent just before we down, came down to this quite echoey garage, we spent five minutes with the engineers. Um, they drew out some torque curves for us, and hopefully we can we can put something on screen for that. But although peak has gone up in the rev range, if you then come back to 5,750 where it used to be, yeah. it's only it's only, it's only marginally a fraction down. down. So, so where peak torque was before, it's a fraction down. Yeah. It just means the torque curve is, is more like this, yes. yeah. just rather a, just than being shallow. like this. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. But it's still got drive low down. Yeah, and we noticed that this afternoon. We've done, what, about 100 miles, combination of... Yeah, just shy of 200 kilometers, yeah. Mountain switchbacks, Bit of dual carriageway, bit of town, bit of village, greasy yep. roundabouts, uh, dusty quarry roads, yep. no off-road apart We've from, had everything. Yeah, a bit of everything. And dual carriageway, I noticed, you know, you, you're cruising at sort of keeping up with traffic type of speeds. And when you need to just make an overtake, it, it's there. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no, you know, mine was a little bit wheezy at the top end. So I think that's been a, I think that's been a really good move. I was afraid of that, but I think that's been a really good move. Wheels the same. 18 inch front, 17 inch rear. The design has changed. A little bit, lighter, a little bit well. lighter, yeah. Yep. But we're still running the Pirelli MT60 yep. RS tires. Despite looking like they should be on some kind of supermoto from the 70s, they're well, great. To be honest, I'm on a lot of Facebook groups for the Scrambler, and everybody tries to get rid of these straight away and put Super Sticky on. I've done my. I did my first track day two week, two years ago at Cadwell. Yep. I kept the knobbly tires on. I had an absolute whale of a time. For this type of bike, these are the tyres you need. Yeah, yeah. We had yeah. no problems if, if today you, with them If you them think about fitting stickier tyres and going on a track day on this, then you should be buying a Monster. Yeah, yeah. No quick shifter. You were a little bit disappointed that there's no quick um, shifter. Yeah, I mean, this model is now just about £10,000. Yeah. So yeah. it's moved up in price. Yeah. I've ridden, I've just come from the Ducati Rally launch, uh -huh. which obviously is a £23,000 Ducati. But I'm so used to quick shifters. Even if you look at bikes under ten thousand pounds, a lot of bikes have a quick shifter straight away. Yeah. And when we went for the evening ride last night in traffic, oh yeah, I was like, do it. oh no, quick shifter. Oh, do it. Did it a few times, and it is a uh, standard on the other models. Yes, and uh, I just only on the night shift, I think. On the night shift, yeah, which is another thousand pounds more it on is. top of this. Yeah, yeah. But I just think for ten thousand pounds, when people are looking at ten thousand pound bikes. It's got cornering ABS, which other bikes have. It's got yep. cornering traction control, yep. which other bikes have. Yep. The quick shifter, if you look at KTMs, you look at Yamahas, for this price, they all come with a quick shifter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personally, I don't miss it. Um, I think if the clutch was as heavy as my one, I would yeah, I yeah. would miss it more. Yeah, 10 years ago, you wanted a quick shifter because the clutch, you needed an arm like a gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> now the clutch is one finger light, yeah. You don't really need a quick no, shifter, no. but it's one of those things when, yeah. when you're so used to having one, yeah. even on, you know, some bikes at six and seven thousand pounds have a quick shifter. Then when you come to a premium, which this is, yeah, yeah. Ducati yeah. Icon, then you yeah. would expect a quick shifter. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we're talking about the Icon. At the same time, there's three models being released. The Icon was always really seen as the base model, yep. wasn't it? Um, it was always a thousand pounds cheaper. It still is. This is coming in at Five pounds under ten thousand pounds. Yeah, it's nine, just a nine, under nine, ten grand. Five. Um, the two other models. The full throttle makes a re makes a reappearance. If we look back through the history, the this is the third third appearance of of a bike called the full, the full throttle. throttle. Yeah. Um, the original one was the yellow and black color scheme. Yep. It had the side panels. It had the twin termy pipe on it. it. Had flat bars. The second iteration was more blacked out. Um, it had. I think it was yellow and black. It was it was much the same. Yeah. This one now, it's got the number plates, it's got the side panels, it's red, only available in red. The icon is yellow, black. Go and for it. This will be impressive. Red as standard. And we'll come on we'll come on to the color schemes later. Because yeah. I think a lot of the early reviews of the of the icon glossed over that a little bit. It just said, Oh, it's available in nine colours. Well it's it's well let's do it now. It's not really. It's available in three colours to buy. And then there's six other colours. I won't name them, but well, there's there's a red, a blue, a couple of greens, there's a sort of slate grey, yeah. there's a, a Rio Celeste, is it called? Well, the idea is that you can change the panels, can't you? Yeah, yeah. And I think the timing that they were saying is under an hour. Yeah. Um, to change yeah. the bike from yellow to a different colour. Yeah. So the idea is you buy your, bike, your base bike, you pick the colour that you want, you buy the kit. It's a front fender, it's a tank cover, a rear fender, 
the panels and the little tags on the wheels. Yep. And I think that's going to be really nice for the customization scene. You know, yeah. we, we were talking with a few of the guys here and we were, we were coming up with our dream combinations. You know, I was saying, oh, let's go for black fenders. Let's go for a really vivid tank. Keep the yellow tags on the wheels. Which, which is exactly what you've done with your own bike. It's yeah, no longer standard. Yeah, you've yeah. got the different levers. Yeah. You've got the termy pipe. Yep. And this is the beauty of the Scrambler is you can personalize it very easily and very quickly. Yep. And you don't need a degree in engineering. Yeah. No. It's bolting bits on and bolting bits off again. And to be honest, you look through the Facebook groups and some of the user groups, you won't find a standard bike there at all. No, no. And, it, and it gets a bit silly because people buy the Classic. You know, my Classic's got the spoke wheels. They'll buy the Classic and then they'll go, oh, can I put alloy wheels on that? And it's like, just buy the Icon. Yeah, yeah, or they'll yeah. buy the Icon and put the spoked wheels on. So yeah, it, it, it fits in with that really customization scene that the Scrambler kind of fell into early on. What's an interesting one I find, like we were talking about it off camera, is the exhaust routing. Yes, yes. Because the exhaust routing is completely different on this one. It is. Where yours had the two kind of into one and then swept back. We've just yep. got one big pipe that you can visually see. Yes. So what's your, are you old exhaust or new exhaust? I, I prefer the look of the old exhaust. But what I noticed is that there's a little um, oil filter gauze removal bolt yep. that's, that's just a, a long way, side from the oil filter. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot more accessible on this model than it is on mine. I have to take a lot of the downpipes off to get that out. This is really accessible. Right, right, right. So I think that's a I think that's a good move in terms of maintenance. Yeah. But personally, I prefer the old. We'll put photos of them both up so you yeah, can yeah, judge yeah. for yourselves. Yeah. Leave by all means leave comments in the in the below, and uh, you know we'll see what the opinion is. So. On the face of it, it still looks, you know, it's recognisable as a scrambler. Yeah, um, it's, the, a strange, the, it's, yeah it's a strange one because when, when we first saw the bike in pictures and when we first came here, you yeah. go, scrambler. Yeah, and, then yeah. when you, and then you start looking at it, you go, well, the shock's no longer on the side, that's in the middle. Yep. The yeah. exhaust routing is completely different. Yeah. You know, the styling is completely different. And then yeah. when you get on it, completely different clocks. And as, as an owner, I look into little things and I, and I go, well, this cover's different and that cover's different. And the 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 disc mounting is different and all of this is different yeah, and yeah. the switch gear is different and the mirrors are different and and so you go well hang on it's, as they said last night 70 percent of the components are different and yet it looks exactly it doesn't look exactly the no, same no, but i but like still... the fact they've done that because they could have drastically changed yes, it yes you know but they've yeah. kept the shape of the original so it, it's part of that dna and it's part of that family Absolutely. but, it, but, it, that's, but it's that's moved what on. i was going to say it's the it's the scrambler dna that's yeah. come through and today riding it that came through in bucket loads. It was still the great scrambler that it was, but it was just, it was like turned up to 11. It was just that little bit better. It was, it was smoother. It was more refined. It was more useful. The TFT gives you yeah. all the info you need. It's got a fuel gauge. Mine hasn't. It's got gear indicator that came in 2019. Mine yeah. hasn't got that. What, it's about got the, the... what about the rider aids as a, as a scrambler owner? Because now we've got lean sensitive ABS. We've got lean sensitive traction control. Yeah. Is that a big or For me, it's not because I'm nowhere near your st your ability of riding. You you probably benefit from that, but I never get anywhere near that to be honest. So it's it's one of those things that's in the back of your mind that it's nice to have. You go into yeah, a corner yeah. and you go, well, I'll just stand on the rear because I know I've got ABS. I'm not going to wipe out. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's good to have um, in the back of your mind. And there were some greasy roundabouts. We came through very, some, very some of those greasy. villages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a couple of times where the tail came out and it was like, oh, thank God that traction controls there because yeah. that would have been. Yeah. That could have been nasty. But but the overall riding, for me, I think it's it's like, you know, we, we were talking at the breaks and we said, you know, is it the same as your other one? And, and at the time, I think I said, yeah, it probably is. In hindsight, I think it's about 95% of what mm -hmm. mine is. But it's just that extra 5% that you go, yeah, actually, this is, this is just that bit better. So the big question, the big conclusion yep. is you've ridden the 2023 model. Yep. You've got the old model. Yep. Are you putting hand in no, pocket? No, I'm not. I'm not. Really? To be honest. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say don't upgrade to it because I think this is clearly a better model. Yeah. You know, it's got the TFT, it's got the connectivity, which is an option. We yep. haven't really touched on that, but the TFT gives you connectivity with your phone. You can read messages, you can answer calls, you can yeah, do yeah, your yeah. playlists and all that. That's of no importance not to me because I, you know, I, I just don't use that, that capability. Um, Gear indicator, I don't really worry about that. Fuel gauge, well, I just, 100 miles, I'll stop. My, my, to be honest, my arse aches at 100 miles anyway, so I pull over and stop. The seat is better on this one. Yeah. It's hard. I think it's a little bit higher than the just old. Just a fraction. But it, but it feels, the whole riding position feels a little bit more 
the, the, over the, yeah, the, the front, position is, is more sporty. The bars are different. It, it, for me, it's got a sportier stance. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's got it's more lively. It's a little sportier than the old bike. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting that you wouldn't trade. I think it's better, but it's it's better for it's probably better for other people. For me, I'm more than happy with mine. The th the thing that I think is great is that if you've read about scramblers and you kind of think, yeah, that bike would suit me. Yeah. Oh, they've brought a new one out. Don't be afraid. The new one is just as good as the old one. It's better than the old one. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so much more to this that if you are looking to upgrade, you're not going to be disappointed. No. Um, but if you if you if you're fresh to the scrambler then this, this really ticks all the boxes that the old one did. So it's a bit of a whistle-stop tour. We can't go into, well, I could talk for ages about scramblers because I, <laughs> I, I just love it anyway. Hopefully from your, you know, you ride so many bikes anyway. What was, what was your lasting impression of it? For me, I mean, obviously I've ridden every incarnation of scrambler. And the first one, I didn't want to fall into this kind of hipstery imagey <laughs> thing. And I was all almost weird, all these weird oh yeah on, weird no, bearded people weird and I was almost against it and then when I left California when I rode the first one I was like take away all the imagery yeah yeah take away all that it's still a brilliant bike yeah yeah and no, I recommended absolutely. it to a few friends and they bought them yeah. and they were new to bikes and they loved it yes absolutely and they were like yeah. easy handling enough power enough torque jacket and jeans bike didn't have to dress like a Power Ranger when I went for a ride and they loved it and every one I've ridden so far I've gone yeah that's great that's great that's great that's great. Then this one comes out, and to me, Ducati have made it slightly sportier. Yep. They've modernized it, so they brought it online with everybody else, because you've got the TFT clocks, you've got the rider aids, you've got the, which you can trim and personalize. Yep. It feels sportier, it feels more over the front. Yeah. So before it kind of sat a little bit it on was, its back. Yeah, it was, yeah, really relaxed. It right. kind of really relaxed, almost like beach boy kind of big bars, yeah, and it yep. steered from the middle. Yeah. And now we're steering more from the front. Yep. Um, the only criticism for me is, I'd like a quick shifter for the price. Yeah. And this category now, below £10,000, is packed yeah, full of is. bikes. It is. So there's not just Scramblers, which BMW and Triumph have got. Yeah. But there's also a plethora of really good bikes, you know, like the Hornet, the Suzuki. Yeah. And they're all like that eight kind of seven. Yeah, they've undercut them quite a bit. They've undercut they? them they've, quite a bit. Yeah, and when you really caught up. your bike, it was seven and a bit. Yep. And now we're seven nine nine five, I think. Which you go. But then I spunked on extra exhausts and jackets. And yeah, but now we're at ten. <laughs> yeah. And then you fit a quick shifter and you buy a few bits. You're still going to be you're going to be at eleven. Then you're going to be close to twelve. Yeah. For an entry level, it's a premium model. Yeah, it is. It's a premium bike, and you're buying into yeah. the Caddy, and they win World Superbikes and MotoGP races, and it does look brilliant. Like everywhere we've gone through town today, people are going. Yeah, absolutely. It looks cool. Yeah. You try not to fall into that kind of cliche scramble the but you can't help it you, you, yeah. it makes us look cool and we do, we are not cool we're not but <laughs> you know we've we've had a lot of european press here this week um italian spanish swedish all sorts yeah. germans you know there's been a whole range of of ages genders body yeah, sizes yeah, yeah. and everybody's just looked fantastic on yeah, this yeah. bike and it, you know it's it's really done it's really yeah. done great anyway that's enough from us jabbering away um, I hope you liked the video. If you did, there's a button specifically for that. Um, you can read the full review on bikesocial.co.uk. Yeah. I've been Steve Lamb. Chad. Be interested to read your comments. Exhaust, before or not. This yep. styling, before or not. Yep. And would you pay £10,000 for yep. a scrambler icon? And we'll post all the colours up and you can choose your best colour. We know what we like. I'm bias. The yellow. yellow one, the yellow one, the yellow one at the back there, just like the 16 Classic. That's the best colour. Everybody knows yellow. it. No, it's that yellow. yellow one. That's orange. Yeah. Anyway, we've been Bike Social. Thanks very much. Cheers.